Welcome, distinguished guests all. It's a thrill to see you here tonight. This has to be the biggest crowd we've had to an initial lecture for one of our thinkers in residence. So thank you so much for coming to uh, hear what's going to be a really interesting talk tonight. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge that we meet on Ghana land and I want to acknowledge the Ghana elders, past and present, and their spiritual connection to the land. Now, some of you may know the work of the Adelaide Thinkers in Residence program. More likely, you will have heard of some of its results. You may know the work of Professor Susan Greenfield and the creation of the RIOs, the Science Exchange, in the old Stock Exchange building in the city. That's there to help foster science awareness and uptake of science in South Australia because we all know that the future is going to be built on science knowledge and we need a lot of students and young people to want to do science. You may, have, you may know about the program because you've seen the 91 apartments being built at the Common Ground in Grote Street and Light Square or heard about the 40 units that are being built in Port Augusta. These are being built for the long-term homeless, providing them with safe accommodation and services to help them with addiction or mental health problems, which is often the reason why they're long-term homeless. Thereby, once we provide them with services and accommodation, we save a huge amount of money which is spent in the emergency services because long-term homeless people often have significant hospital needs, which is very expensive. You may have heard about us because you might have heard about the new service model for early childhood development being delivered in 28 new early, early childhood centres, all using the understanding given to us by Fraser Mustard. He tells us that the early years are critical for brain development. You may be using one of these centres or for your children or your grandchildren, and you'll see that there are new models now being rolled out across South Australia. You may know of the work of the program because you may know that we've done work on succession planning on family businesses with Dennis Jaffe and value chains in food and wine production with Professor Andrew Fern in involving many pri primary producers and companies. You may also have heard about the Australian Centre for Social Innovation created by the residency of Jeff Mulgan and doing outstanding work. You might know about the Bioinnovation Centre and many of you manufacturers who are here today may in fact be using that centre that emerged out of the Moira Smith residency. And you may well have come across the recently launched Commission for Integrated Design, launched last year, which will ensure a more intelligent, more attractive built form and a livelier city of Adelaide. You would know, I'm sure, that Adelaide now has a government architect like Melbourne has had for many years. And both of these, and thank you, you're welcome, both of you here, uh, both of these flow from the recommendations of the Professor Laura Lee Residency. All in all, this program over seven years has created over $230 million of new or redirected investment. It's created four new organisations, each one of which has a commitment to innovation and ongoing value creation. It's transformed policy and institutions in areas as diverse as climate change, renewable energy, early childhood and water, and is currently introducing new insights and change into the technology area, road safety, public transport, planning and the development systems. The Thinkers in Residence program changes our way of thinking and offers us new approaches to our future, which we then act upon in very concrete ways. This is the first time, though, that we've turned our focus onto the manufacturing sector at the request of the South Australian chapter of the Australian Industry Group and the Department of Trade and Economic Development. Now, you all know, and I'm sure that's why you're here, that the manufacturing industry is important to South Australia. It continues to employ around 85,000 South Australians and it represents a higher proportion of our state's economic activity than anywhere else in Australia. It is and will be critical to our economic success in the long term. This residency, like all the others, will follow an established method. This public lecture is part of it, supported by the media that we've had today and yesterday and before. Um, this, this supported by the media to let the broad community know what's going on. We'll be doing briefings to relevant ministers, to cabinet, to agencies and organisations. We'll do a mountain of work and there'll be many, many, many meetings getting to know all the main players across the system of manufacturing in South Australia and Australia. Then there'll be some deep consideration and reflection about the sector undertaken by our thinker, to whom I'll introduce you in a moment. This process over six to nine months will be followed by a final lecture and a report leading, we hope, we're sure, to the implementation of some key recommendations and leading inevitably to long-term change in this sector. This method of working across a whole system sets out to accelerate learning and change. The thinkers leave us recommendations, of course, but it is the partners who enact them. For those of you who don't know, the program is supported by the government through Department of Premier and Cabinet for the cost of its small team. But each residency is paid for by investors who care deeply about the area in question and have a need to solve the complex problems and challenges around manufacturing. They are the Department of Premier and Cabinet, the Department of Trade and Economic Development, 
the Australian Industry Group, Innovate SA, Flinders University, University of Adelaide, University of South Australia and the City of Marion. We are especially pleased as well as our partners to have a number of companies participating in nine full day workshops which Professor Roos will deliver between now and September. We thank you so much for coming on board and for committing to a rigorous process of learning and change with us. I'd like to name those companies. Intercast and Forge, Corvest, Filmac, Sage Automation, Sage Didactic, Hague's Manufacturing, Sealy International, SJ Cheeseman, SMR Automotive Australia, Titronics Developments Australia. Now, Professor Roos aims to leave a number of champions or leaders who, by participating in this learning process, can continue to pass on this vital information and capacity into the future. Innovate SA, DTED and the companies themselves will, we hope, fulfil this role in different ways. You see, we're starting to plan how we can implement results of this residency right at the beginning of the residency. So the implementation of these recommendations are never, ever left to chance. We take them very seriously right from the beginning. The role of the universities too in this residency is particularly exciting. More than 15 researchers will support this work, assist Professor Roos in producing a book describing his process of business model development and advancing case studies with individual companies. As you can see, this residency is a very rich one. It addresses a few key questions with leaders and decision makers in the manufacturing sector, many of whom are here today. Manufacturing policy and strategy. How do we intend as a state to maximise our opportunities in a rapidly changing world? Business enterprise innovation. How are companies going to develop their future directions and adapt to changing opportunities? What about changing technology? What about changing global conditions? Relevant academic research. What can universities bring to business capacity and innovation? What does digital technology and manufacturing mean to training and skill development for our young people? How do South Australians view this industry? as a relic of the past or, for, or, as, or as an engine for future growth and success. Professor Joran Roos works across many fronts in many places and spends a great deal of time on a plane. But as we're seeing in South Australia, he really hits the ground running. To give you some insight, Joran has produced <clears throat> impact on the development of the field of intellectual capital worldwide. He's helped restructure defence research in Sweden, Austria, primary industries research in the state of Victoria, technical research in Finland, and the development of the graphic arts industry in Australia, Norway, and Sweden. He's had profound impact on the strategic repositioning of some major firms worldwide. Together with Professor Onderberg, he's developed and implemented research and technology management systems and information management systems for public and private firms. He's advised government bodies in the UK, in Sweden, in Norway, in Denmark, Finland, Spain, Austria and Australia on issues relating to strategy, R&D, national and re regional innovation systems issues, knowledge management and intellectual capital. He is the man for us. Joran is an honorary professor at Warwick University UK and a part-time visiting professor in business performance and intangible asset management at the Centre for Business Performance, Cranfield University UK. And he's a senior advisor with the Alto Executive Education Academy. Joran Roos is the founder of, the Intellect of Intellectual Capital Services Limited London and Sydney and founder and chairman of VTT Technical Research Centre of Finland, where he is, as I said, chairman of the board. Before I introduce Joran to you, I forgot to mention that we are all very happy to have a Professor Fred Wegman with us in the audience tonight. Professor is also a thinker in residence, conducting a residency focused on road safety, and he arrived back in Australia today, so a particular welcome to you. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce Professor Joran Roos.